there, it's Sheree Miller with Food Freedom Therapy, and I just want to talk today a little bit about BMI. I've gotten some questions about BMI. What is it? Is it valid? And what does it really tell us about our health? So let's tackle that today. I actually did a blog post that has a lot more information than what I'm going to talk about in the video because I'm going to try to keep the video at about 10 minutes or less. And so definitely check out that blog post for more information uh, specifically about the research and also the references for that research. So let's get started. First, BMI, it is a formula uh, of our weight divided by our height squared. It is supposedly a measurement of body fat. Now, is that actually valid? Questionable, very questionable. Um, actually, we talk about the history of BMI. It was uh, originally developed by a Belgian mathematician in like the 1830s, so we're talking almost 200 years ago. And it was never intended to be an individual measure of health. He actually warned against that. Clearly, we did not listen. Um, <laughs> but what he was trying to do was study populations as a whole and um, put people on a bell curve and then see what that statistical norm was. And what he wanted to do was define the average man. Um, and that average man is important because he used white men in this calculation. So I'm gonna skip a lot of the history of BMI and go straight uh, to about 1995 when the National Institute of Health really, really started pushing BMI after they had a panel on uh, obesity. Okay, and what they did was they made some changes to things related to BMI. So one, they created a new category and they differentiated between overweight and obese. But the other thing they did is they way lowered the cutoff for being uh, being considered of normal weight, right? So a bunch of us went to sleep that night and woke up the next day suddenly medically fat even though we had not gained a single pound, which really just points to how subjective this whole thing is. Um, and if you look at a lot of the research and a lot of the experts and uh, people who talk about obesity, there's actually a lot of conflict of interest. Uh, some of them have ties to companies that benefit from obesity, um, fear mongering, and the whole idea of it being an, a health epi epidemic. So yeah, that's a post for another day because I need to do some more research on that. I know I listened, I think it was to a Christy Harrison podcast about it and it was really good. I just didn't write it down and I need to go back and find it. Moving along though. Okay, now we know what BMI is. We know kind of the history of it. Now is it valid? Well, it doesn't actually tell us much about body fat. Um, it can maybe give us an estimate, but it's really thrown off for a lot of people because of two major factors. And they're not the only factors, but they're the major ones. We got muscle mass and bone density, right? Okay. So people who have naturally higher muscle mass or people who are athletic, um, that's going to skew their results, right? Because their calculation is going to be a little thrown off by that. Also people with, uh, bo big bones or, uh, in like a higher, there we go. Higher. I haven't had enough coffee today higher bone density um, actually can get skewed results. And research has shown that uh, actually black people uh, tend to have higher bone density, which means that a lot of times um, the BMI can be overestimating fatness in black people. And interestingly enough, the World Health Organization itself, who supports the use of BMI, um, has stated that it actually underestimates fatness in Asian cultures, which can, as they've put it, lead to underdiagnosing of certain medical conditions. So that's a problem they acknowledge. But again, we don't really talk about that. We don't hear that part of it, um, which is a great segue to how does BMI relate to health? Well, we've been led to believe that weight and, you know, by extension, BMI is one of the most important determinants of health, if not the most important determinant of health. But that's just really not true. It's not backed up by the science, even though uh, we hear that all the time, right? So it's like you talk to anybody and it's just like, duh, everybody knows, right? The research shows that being overweight or obese causes all these really terrible health conditions. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, I'm sure, over and over, but 
correlation does not equal causation. So just because being overweight is associated with those things does not mean that it causes those things. There could be, for instance, underlying physical conditions that contribute to both things. There could be underlying uh, emotional mental health conditions. Uh, some examples are uh, poverty, um, trauma, uh, being victims of discrimination, all three of those major things have been shown in research to have significant impacts on health and to cause um, chronic illness and disease in people. But we don't really talk about that, right? Not nearly as much as we talk about weight. And when we do studies on health, and weight, we can't always isolate weight as a factor, right? So what that means is we can't always account for all these other factors, right? Because we just talked about three, but there's way more. There's age, there's sex, there's genetics, right? How huge is genetics, right? Our family uh, history of certain illnesses and conditions. Um, we tend to blame diabetes on diet and weight, but the truth is there's a ginormous... <laughs> Uh, genetic component uh, to diabetes, just as an example. Okay, so there's that problem with the research, right? Uh, the other thing is there's a lot of research that totally gets ignored, right? So there's actually research that talks about how um, being overweight or obese is is potentially neutral for your health or maybe even beneficial to your health, right? So there's research that shows that being overweight can be a protective factor, which means that if you do get a certain illness, you're less likely to die from it if you are in the overweight category. So uh, some examples are uh, certain types of cancer, certain types of heart uh, disease, and there's more, right? But we don't hear about those studies. Um, there have also been studies that have shown that people in the overweight category actually have longer lives and have more mortality than uh, people in the normal category. So. So not only is there a lot of evidence and research that is misinterpreted and misapplied, but there's also a lot of research that just totally gets swept under the rug and ignored. So problematic on a lot of levels. Um, if you are interested in learning more, again, check out the blog post. It's got more information, more research I didn't talk about, and all the references um, for that, as well as check out the Health at Every Size Movement. Uh, you can go to the resources section of my website and check that out, um, or you can just do a Google search for Health at Every Size. There's a lot of information on the web as this movement uh, picks up steam, which is great. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Let, let me know. I'm I love to have dialogues about all these issues and um, I'm all about dismantling this diet culture stuff that is uh, killing us really. It's making us sick physically and emotionally and it's killing us uh, in so many ways. So happy to do that. So let me know. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Shereen Miller, foodfreedomtherapy.com.